Hi Sunview, it's Mrs. Hilliard here from Occupational Therapy. Some of you call me Miss Alyssa. I'm here today to show you more things that you can do at home to keep up with your fine motor skills. And I have my bins with me, one, two, and three. And as I stated in my last video, we always have a strengthening activity in bin number one, a cut and paste and writing activity in bin number two, and a self-help activity in bin number three. Today, um, I have a ball in bin number one to work on our eye-hand coordination. And if you can have someone at home help you play catch, that would be great. I'm going to throw the ball up in the air and catch it 10 times, but I would like you to play catch with a partner if anyone is watching this video with you. So we're gonna throw this up in the air 10 times and catch it as best as we can. Ready? Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good job. All right, you guys can use a balloon if you don't have a ball and volley the balloon. That's another good um, skill for eye-hand coordination and gross motor strength. I also have in bin number one beads and a lace. You can use a shoelace at home if you don't have a string like this one. I also have different sized beads. I have uh, these little square beads and then I have perler beads that you can get in any craft store. If you do not have beads at home, you can use noodles, different size noodles to challenge your fine motor skills. So we're going to string 20 beads. You're gonna grab your string, push it through the hole, and slide the bean all the way down. All right, we're gonna try that with the bigger bead. Push it through the hole, push the string through the hole, and slide the bead all the way down. You wanna make sure that you slide it all the way down the string and that works on crossing visual midline for writing skills. So we're gonna do about five more of those. And you guys can finish your necklace on your own after this video. That's two. Three. Good job guys. That is a good job of warming up your hands. We are ready to do some cutting and writing, so we're going to set bin number one aside. All right, in bin number two, we're going to make another spring craft today, working on your fine motor skills. We're going to make a B, and a he is in the shape of an oval, so we're gonna practice drawing an oval. If you do not have yellow paper at home, that's fine. You can use white paper and then color in your oval with a yellow marker or crayon. So I have a half a sheet of construction paper because I like to conserve paper at home, especially now when it's not so easy to run out to the store and get more construction paper. And I have black construction paper. So if you need to pause the video and go get some yellow and black construction paper, um, you can do that to make things easier. All right. So I am going to draw an oval. And if you don't know how to draw a, an oval on your own or you have a hard time, you can always fold the paper in half. Make sure you line up the corners. So it looks like a card. And then you can draw a half of an oval and make sure you draw on the side of your paper that is folded. So it almost looks like a backwards C or a forward C and you have half of an oval. Then you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut out that half of an oval. Or if you chose to draw the whole oval and cut it out on your own, that's great too. 
All right, once we cut out our oval, we can open it up and then we have the whole thing. All right, so the next thing that we have to do for our B is we have to make stripes. So instead of drawing those stripes, we're gonna practice our motor skills by folding paper. So if you have black paper, that would be great. You can fold your black paper in half. So we always like to work on folding in the OT because it is such an important visual motor skill for kindergarten through third grade and even up. So you wanna line up those corners flat on the paper, flat on the table, and make another card. And then you're gonna fold it in half again. Like this, make sure you line up the corners. You could put it flat on the table. So you're gonna end up with a square like this. Make sure you push down hard to make a crease when you're folding paper. Now you should be able to see lines on this paper when you open it up. And that's where we're gonna cut. We're gonna cut on those lines. So we're gonna cut all the way down, and then we're gonna cut our piece of papers in half. We cut it in half. We're gonna cut this part in half again. So then you're going to take a pencil or a white crayon. If you have a white crayon, um, it's always good to have so that you can see your lines on black paper. So I have a white crayon right here, and I'm going to draw lines down. And we're just going to draw lines all the way down to practice drawing lines down and sizing them. So they're going to look like that. When you're done. All right, now we're going to practice cutting on those lines. So make sure you're holding your scissors the right way with your thumb in the little hole and the, your other fingers in the big hole. As you get more advanced with cutting, you can leave your pointer finger out and that kind of guides the scissors on the paper when you're making your turns and opening and closing your scissors. So we're gonna cut on those lines. You don't need to cut them off. Oh, I made a little mistake there. Hopefully this one is smoother. So we're gonna cut at least three. So when you're done, your black stripe should look like this. And then we're gonna take our black stripe and glue it on our B. So I will show you how to do that. Just like this. And then we're gonna do another one. And then another one. Now when you're done, you might have some of those little pieces hanging over and that's when you can take your scissors and snip off the extra. So when you're done, it looks like this. If your lines are not sticking, you can always go back and put more glue on. And then it should start to look like a bee. All right, and then you're gonna take some white paper. So you can see on my B, I have two little circles here, another two ovals, two little ovals, and those are gonna be your B's wings. So the nice thing about this is you can also fold your paper and make two at the same time. So I tore off a little piece of white paper, or you can cut a little piece of white paper or use scrap paper, fold it in half. Again, we're working on those folding skills. And then you're gonna cut an oval. And snip it 
part and then you'll end up with two wings and then you glue those on your bee and then you should look like that and then you can take a marker and give your bee a little eye so he looks like a bee and then some of you have these little scraps left over. Sometimes I like to make a little stinger for my bee, so I will cut a little triangle. Cut one of those in half on a diagonal. And you made a bee. Did a great job, guys. All right, so now we're gonna do the writing piece. So you can set your bee aside and grab some writing paper and preferably a short pencil. Maybe you can break a pencil in half with mom and dad so that you don't um, hold your pencil the wrong way using all of your fingers. This definitely encourages a proper pencil grasp. All right, and then what you can do is make that high right paper like we used last week. So I have regular lined paper and I'm going to take this marker and highlight the bottom of the writing line so that I have a guide where to put my letters when I'm writing a sentence. So it should look like that when you're done. And you can make up your own sentence about your bee or about spring, or you can print a poem to copy. And I have a poem that I'm gonna copy. It's the bee poem. So it says, buzz goes the bee, hour after hour, buzz goes the bee from flower to flower. So we're going to practice keeping our letters on the line when we write. And I want to make sure that you guys are sitting your letters on the line and leaving good spaces between your words when you write. Remember to keep those letters in the yellow. The capital letters should touch the top and the bottom line, but the lowercase letters should stay in the yellow. And when you're done, it will look something like that. Okay, I will hold my poem up for you for a second in case you want to copy it or mom and dad want to copy it. And then you could copy it from what they write. You guys are doing great. Thanks for hanging in there today. So that's our cutting craft and our spring sentence. And then you can kind of take your bee and put them on the bottom and glue it on there and hang it on the fridge or use it as a spring decoration. So in our last bin, we always work on fasteners. Whoops. And today I have our shoe and hopefully you'll practice shoe tying with me. And I also have some dressing garments or vests that I use at school for practicing zippers. So if you have a hoodie um, at home or a coat with a zipper on it, we can practice that together. You can pause this video and go get it. All right, so first we're gonna work on zipping. So when you guys zip, the most important thing to remember, and it's hard to show in a video, is that you always wanna hold your thumbs up. So thumbs up when you zip. If you hold your coat with your fingers down like this, it's very hard to get the zipper together. So thumbs up 
And you want to look for that little slot in the, the little keyhole. I call it the garage for some of our students. And then this little key right here, we'll call the car. And the car goes in the garage. And make sure you push it all the way down so that it locks in place. And then you're gonna pull up. So you can practice zipping on your own, but make sure that you push that key all the way in so the zipper doesn't separate when you go to pull up. Let's try our shoe tying one more time today. While I have you guys, remember, we always leave this top hole right here open so that we can plug in the ends of our laces. Okay, you're gonna plug them in and then hold up your bunny ears. You should have two bunny ears. You're gonna make an X with those bunny ears. And then the one that's behind, the bunny ear that's behind, you're gonna push down through the tunnel and pull. Good job. Now you're gonna hold up those bunny ears again and make an X. And the one that's behind is gonna go down through the hole and pull. And then you can take those little plugs out or those little lace ends out and you tied your shoe. So some of you guys are doing the standard shoe tying method. So that is the single loop method. So you're gonna open your laces all the way up and just kind of cross them. The one that's behind is gonna come down through the tunnel and you're gonna pull. And then you're gonna make your one bunny ear, make one bunny ear. And then on my other lace, I tied a little knot to make it easier for you guys. So this little knot is gonna fly around this bunny ear and jump down through that little tunnel where you saved a space. And you're gonna switch hands and pull. So you're gonna switch your hand to that lace to pull. We'll try that one more time. Crisscross your laces, hold them up. You see that X? The one that's behind is gonna go down through the front tunnel. You're gonna make that bunny ear, hold it, find that little knot on your other lace, fly it around the loop, save that space underneath right here, push it down through that little tunnel, switch your hand so you can pull your lace, and pull. Good job. You guys did a great job today. I hope to see you next time. I may see you on your Zoom call and we might do the same thing, but at least you're getting extra practice. Take care and have a good day.